Okay, here I'm going to briefly cover some of the water pumps and explain a little bit about them. Submersible, inline, and some pumps. Now we're going to avoid the uh, hand pump here, so if you're using one of these, odds are probably not able to take advantage of some of the common irrigation systems. All of these here run on some form of, of power, uh, rather than just manual uh, power here. So first off, we've got to start with some terms. Uh, two key ones that you may see pumps displayed in. Many different types of pumps out there. The standard classifications are they will tell you how many gallons per minute GPM or gallons per hour. They'll give you that quote so you can have an idea of the flow rate. Also, you might see something called head height. That's the maximum pumping height of or called the zero flow point. What that means is how high or how many feet can that pump pump that water before it's unable to actually cause a flow rate. And that'll be the head height there. This could be important if you're mounting a pump very low and you're putting the um, in the bottom of a big irrigation tank. You got to pump it out of the tank and up to another area if you're going uphill for a larger operation. Uh, so just keep that in mind of what head height is. Now an inline pump, typically placed outside the water reservoir, they're more powerful than these submersible pumps I'll talk about in a second. They do tend to require air cooling and they're commonly found in large-scale operations. You want to oversize these pumps due to restrictions in the system. So I've used these, uh, and they're, they can be quite powerful. They can be a little noisy at times. Uh, they are air-cooled, and sometimes they do need priming, so keep that in mind. Um, they're, so they're a little bit better for larger operations or moving a little higher volume of water in most cases. Then there's submersible pumps. These sit directly in the water um, reserves that you have. The advantage is these pumps are water-cooled. If you're keeping that water at a good temperature, um, it can help cool the pump so you don't burn it out. If you are running it for an extended period of time, though, recirculating that water in particular, you can heat the water up with this type of pump. So keep that also in mind of the pros and cons. The advantage is when it is pumping, it is mixing the nutrient solution. It's typically used in smaller operations due to the overall lack of power found in this classification of pumps. Despite stated values, you want to figure out what you need and then purchase a pump that's about double the volume that you need. Um, simply because of the lack of efficiencies tends to be with them. So their stated values tend to be a little bit overstating, I feel, those values. You want to watch the head height, so you want to, don't want to have these pump a great distance up, because uh, they can be a little bit weaker most of the time in that regards, but just keep note of it or look for that on the pump you're looking at purchasing. I use this one here in a flood and drain operation. The last one, the sub-pump, uh, these are commonly used to transfer and mix in. Also, uh, pump out a basement that tends to flood, so that's where you may be familiar with these. They can be classified as kind of this special classification of submersible pumps. Uh, they tend to come in a little bit larger sizes. They can be measured in horsepower, uh, but commonly used for transfer or mixing. A little bit on the larger end of things, uh, they can have this kind of automatic shutoff. So this is just kind of a specialized version of this we talked about previously, are submersible pumps. So they need to be submersed in that water to help pump it. So again, if you're looking at a bigger operation, this could be something you to consider. Uh, hopefully that gives you just that brief overview of pumps to consider for your irrigation options.